Monks Buddha and I have developed a very interesting relationship, folks. And I need to say this before we even start. We literally meet at the studio like we've just come in now and then we say, what are we going to talk about? Then he says, I don't know. Then I say, I don't know too. But there's this smile that's on his face <laughs> that, is, that is anticipating a conversation that is definitely authentic, that is absolutely un unrehearsed. We don't know how this is going to unfold. And that's the exciting part. Please join us on 011-883-0702 as I speak to Monks Buddha. Uh, Savya Sachi Das Prabhu. Uh, talking about the fulfillment of freedom. Uh, Monks Buddha, what is freedom? A huge question. Big question. Big, big. Generally, we're taught about freedom that we have uh, the right to pursue what we want without impediment. We want to exercise our free will, but we find that when it comes to that, it's not all that it's built up to be. I'll give an example. When people are incarcerated, then only do they appreciate said freedom of being a free citizen. When they're in jail, now they can see the bars and they can see the confinement. But even within prison, you find that you can get certain freedoms. You can move this way, you can move that way. So ultimate freedom is one consideration and then there's relative freedom. Most of the freedom that we're discussing is within the relative space. The freedom of someone in jail that is class A, class B, class C. So the broader conversation is that not all of us are in that type of prison, but we are in another type of prison which the bars aren't visible. The world that we live in is, first of all, physically a confined space in terms of the universe. The descriptions of the universe are one big giant air with many planetary systems. And according to one's consciousness, one is put in a particular planetary system, particular planet for a certain playing out of one's karmic destiny. Then another level, is that we are placed within this body that we get in the womb of our mother. So that body says, wherever you are born, there's also certain societal uh, confinements that you find yourself in. And then deeper than the bodily confinement is psychological confinement, where according to what you know, who you know, how you uh, interpret the world around you, you are limited or allowed more space space to maneuver. So I want to discuss freedom by first locating who is it that is trying to be free? Who am I? And what freedom am I seeking? Freedom from what? And freedom to do what? So freedom would mean no limitations to exercise one's will. But we find that one's will is always curtailed by certain parameters. And just a conversation that's sort of more practical. We live in a country, it has its laws. And we cannot just run red lights, for example. We're supposed to be, uh, our freedoms to move are channeled and guided by the laws. So to understand deeper freedom, we have to start from understanding who we are, where we are, and then determine what it is that we would like to achieve by being free. When we speak of freedom, when we spoke of freedom back in the days when we were not free, We envisaged a time when we could be human, when we could be treated like human beings, because we felt dehumanized by the laws of that time. We wanted the opportunity to study what we wanted to study. We wanted the opportunity to pursue whatever 
uh, form of livelihood we wanted. We wanted to raise our families in the way that we wanted to raise our families. And then we got democracy. <clears throat> Um, and many people will argue that it is at least the best way that we know so far to be able to exercise those freedoms. And we discovered when we entered into the democratic era that it too has got certain confinements, certain impediments, and certain limitations. And many of us now are saying, we are not free in the so-called freedom. Mm. It appears to me that freedom lives in the mind while you are incarcerated. But as soon as you get to that freedom, you find that there are other forms of limitations once you get there. So it appears to me that this idea of freedom is never, is never ever separated from some kind of limitation, some kind of, of framework that, m that makes you appreciate. And I'm starting to get the sense that there is no such thing as freedom without any limits. That freedom is somehow inextricably, necessarily connected to some form of limitation in order for us to appreciate it. Yes, yeah. yes, it's a, a freedom is founded on love and love means a certain type of responsibility. Take for example, we talk about freedom but we don't let young kids drive on the road, you know, there's a certain time they have to get their license. Sure. So if we were really about freedom, just let them drive. Uh, but we understand that there's a certain qualification, a certain responsibility that comes with that freedom. If you let them drive and they're too young and they cannot handle the pressure, they create problems, accidents, people lose their lives. So love and freedom, that if you love someone, then you sacrifice your own freedoms to please that person, to facilitate them. So if we look at it in the political sense of the freedoms that we've been craving and felt we got, was that if they were being given by a benevolent lover, then they would be facilitating and making great sacrifices that each and every one uh, gets what they're looking for in terms of being free. You articulated the aspirations of people and what we anticipated with freedom. So when there is no love, then the freedom that is sold is like the carrot that is put before the horse that's drawing a big load. Yeah. Yes, it will come just now, but at what cost? And it never actually comes. It never comes because it's predicated by someone uh, flashing something you, you desire, but someone who is not ready to facilitate you to get it because they want to get something from you. Let's talk about this love thing. Uh, you seem to be suggesting that love is discipline. You seem to be suggesting at some level that love is a forfeiting of certain pleasures. Yes. You seem to be suggesting that love is steeped in the idea that in order for us to experience maximum freedom, there must be maximum sacrifice. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Um, the parents, what they go through for the child, that is love in action, not just lip service. They take out great sacrifices and great difficulties to create a wonderful life for the children. So for society as a whole to enter into greater 
experiences of freedom, they have to first be educated in sacrifice, in duty. So when we don't understand our role in the group dynamic of real freedom, we go at it from a selfish perspective, where freedom for my senses, for my unbridled enjoyment. But if we are coming from a place of sacrifice, and then we want the happiness of the other. And by doing that, actually we get true happiness. So it's also a, an education point. How have we been raised to understand our role in the society unit, for example? If we're being trained to consume, 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 enjoy, enjoy, push, push, for me, for me, then in fact we infringe on each other's freedoms. There's enough resources by God's design for, as Gandhi expressed, for men's needs, but not enough for men's greed. So freedom means sacrificing the immediate so-called pleasures, selfish pleasures, for the long-term um, security, safety, peace of the other. Can you call on 011-883-0702, a rather philosophical conversation, a deep philosophical conversation, and me asking you the question that says, what do you understand freedom to mean? What is freedom? When, when, when somebody comes to you and says, we shall be free, what do you actually understand by that very, very big statement? What are you, what are you being asked to, to give up? And from where does that statement come from? Does it come from a real place of love where there is real sacrifice so that you can enjoy the freedom? Or does it come from a place of wanting to incarcerate you even further, only with a little bit of a carrot in front of you that you'll never ever enjoy, but you will pull the load that, that serves the interests of the people that say that they will give you freedom? whether those people are in the religious sector, whether those people are in the political sector, whether those people are in the commercial sector. What is freedom? And how do you get away from that kind of incarceration? It appears to me, Buddha, that however you dice it, you are going to be incarcerated in one way or the other incarcerated by your own understanding of love. I think uh, there's a quote by, by the name of Khalil Gibran. He says, to be wounded by your own understanding. Yeah? yeah? That at some level you are going to be either incarcerated by chaos or by love. But what is sure is that you are going to be incarcerated. Talk to me about that. Yes, a, a very strange concept comes to mind, something called divine slavery. That if there are two planes of existence, you take the tree and on the bank of the river, it has the real fruit on the tree. And then there's the tree reflected on the, on the river. It, it also shows the same fruit. So some may plunge into the waters trying to enjoy that fruit, but they never get the actual fruit. So there's two planes of existence. We're incarcerated by the illusory side in material existence, where we conceive of ourselves as a material being. And then we are incarcerated in the divine realm by the freedoms of serving the Supreme as though uh, he is one of us, an equal, a lover, a parent. 
So both seem to be places of service and only service is the mode of operation. But one yields illusion that it's never satisfying, it's temporary. The other is actually our natural position, that the service and giving of ourselves to the beloved is where we draw the greatest remuneration. So incarceration means that at the level of who we are as souls, we have two options always. It's either we're in the external energy or we're absorbed in the internal energy, spiritual energy. Those are the two choices. There's nothing in the middle. But what you're saying is that in both options, service, service is the current. Sacrifice, except that here yeah, we're sacrificing so much. Everyone knows what they're going through just to stay alive, just to keep bread on the table. Yet, even you know those who sacrifice in the struggle for these freedoms, um, some then come back to say, look, let us get for us. We work so hard and let's take more for us. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't go to the struggle to be poor. For nothing. Abanya said, we did the struggle, but we don't, we're not seeing the fruit. So here, regardless where you're positioned, that type of fruit is limited to this limited experience of birth to death. Whereas the one hankering for actual freedom is beyond birth and death. It's the spiritual in a person and by design his or her joy is in this loving sacrifice so the idea of to whom we should sacrifice is what is missing then we will find deity <laughs> the more we have this conversation freedom looks like incarceration <laughs> freedom looks like service yes. but freedom is incarceration and service, it sounds to me. By what? Because whether it is slavery, you are incarcerated. And whether you are free, you are incarcerated. Yeah? You, you, you are in proud submission. The, the divine slavery that you, sp you spoke about. Proud submission. Mm. And then there's the slavery where you are not in proud submission. You yes. are Christ. you're oppressed. Mm. Right? So you, 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 you seem to be suggesting to me that there is no such thing as freedom. In other words, freedom uh, that is understood to be absolutely no limitations, no... Uh, form some form of limitation and framework and, 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 and discipline and there is no such thing one way or the other there is a form of incarceration it depends on whether it is done with consciousness or not yes the, the framework is relationships relationships uh, dictate what type of freedoms we have just like how you deal with your father, how you deal with your brother and sister, how you deal with the police. It's how do we interact for the greater good? And so the greatest good is then the platform upon which all freedoms are founded. And with that reference to the greatest of beings, we never really know what's our quota of said freedom. And so you say, are you saying to me that you can't be free if you, if you can't be, you have to be religious to be free? It's not really about religious, it's your nature to relate to your source, your maker. Yeah. Yes, it's just like your children. It, they can't be your children if they don't relate to you, really. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't uh, bring the relationship to proper fruition. So the relationship with the world we find, what is it? Who, what does it, who does it belong to? How are we supposed to use the resources of this world that we live in? That is a, an education point. And when we think it's whatever I survey is for me to get and to exploit and to enjoy, we're already mistaken. It is not our property. We have not come here with anything. So we are basically operating on a false premise 
even the whole economic uh, exercise, <laughs> capitalism, whatever it may be, if it is not informed by the owner of world resources, then it is necessarily of course. Mariah is in Rivonia. Good evening to you, Mariah. Hello, Aubrey. Yeah, go nice for it. Man. You. Yeah, Lovely absolutely. Topic. Indeed, go for it. Um, Aubrey, the thing that comes to my mind is that freedom is exactly now what your guest has spoken about, is connected to relationships. So, if I think back, you know, if you are in, a, let's say, in a marriage or, a, you know, a, a partner relationship, and that breaks up, you're now free. But you probably are not so free that you do not hanker after them. You, you're now free in a sense that you are alone. You, 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 you know, you, you miss the connections that you had, the, 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 what have you, the things that you shared, that sort of thing. So your freedom is now a form of, I'd rather be incarcerated, but in the right circumstances. So, you know, um, so, so that's one element. The other one is, um, you're also not free if you know, or I speak for myself, I suppose, if my if the people closest to me are not okay. So if they're okay, yes, now I'm free to, you know, socialize, enjoy my food and this and that. But if I know that there's a problem, you you, you just you don't feel free now to do those things because you're worried, you know, you you, you, you are now you, your mind is split in yeah. terms of something else. So you, you don't feel free to just you know, to be free, to enjoy the things that, that you do enjoy. And just to finish off, I think the one picture that comes to mind is of a small child, a very small child, and um, and the mother is, is there or their parent, um, and so they they free to, to you know they run and they squeal and this and that, but let that mother or parent disappear, a child is still alone. It's not going to squeal and that accept in agony because they can't find their parent anymore, and and there I think is is. How I see freedom. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Mariah. Much appreciated. Please give us a call at double one eight eight three zero seven zero two. We're talking about what is freedom, and the reason why I'm asking this question this evening is because we, in many of our conversations and our general narratives, talk about I want to be free. I want to be free from financial uncertainty. I want to be free from, from a relationship that is not fulfilling. I want to be free from ridicule in the community or society that I live in. I want to be free from poverty. I want to be free from, from I want to be free. And it appears to me that we sometimes think that freedom is a situation where there is no incarceration. And what I think uh, Spuda is saying is that there is no reality without some form of incarceration. You are either incarcerated in a reality that is guided by love, or you are incarcerated by a reality that is guided by an absence of love. And oppression comes from an incarceration that has an absence of love. And freedom is an incarceration that has the, the, the presence of love. But there's always incarceration. Is that what you say? Yes, if we frame incarceration as having to do things that are right over than what we want to do. You know, like freedom to do what I want uh, or freedom to do what is supposed to be done for the greater good. So let me see if I understand you correctly. There are certain base um, impulses that we have. Uh, you, you get me into a, a, a restaurant with this seafood, bro. Right? You, you need to hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> You, need, you seriously need to hold me back because my, my base behavior will override my, my 
my discipline in them. So you got to really watch me. If you put me into a place where there's nice seafood, you, be, you, better, you better watch me. But what you're saying is that the impulse to just dive into that platter. Yeah, chops, man. Chops. <laughs> what a voice. <laughs> anyway, so, so the impulse to, to, to dive into whatever it is that I have a, an undisciplined love for, right? Can be an, an oppression. Yes. The, the decision based on consciousness and education and awareness to not dive into the platter creates the ability for us to have a dignified environment where people can sit quietly and wait for their food, maybe even pay for their food. And therefore it opens up avenues of opportunity when we start to behave in a way that is is guided by discipline slash love. Is that yeah. what you say? Yes, I could give an example of um, so drugs or alcohol. You know, one may like such things, enjoys them, but then they have the freedom to indulge. What happens is that by that freedom, they become incarcerated by addiction, and if they're disciplined enough to understand that that freedom to just indulge in that drug takes away their freedom, then what they do, they go to a rehab and surrender their freedom to just go for drugs so that by curtailing that freedom, they can be released from the incarceration of the oh. very thing that they, they think they are enjoying. A scripture comes to mind, even as you say that never understood it. I can't remember where exactly. <laughs> I've heard it before. I think it's one of the apostles in the Bible that says everything is permissible but not everything is profitable. Everything is permissible but not everything is expedient. Everything. So you can have the enjoyment of that freedom you can have it mm. but there's a bill to pay but there's a bill to pay yeah. is what you say yes so what is freedom so that freedom comes from learning to discipline our impulses that would mean sense control mind self mastery yeah yes and then giving our free will limited free will back to the master of all will but that requires guided training, education. How to relinquish this, I want to do it my yeah, way. Yeah, dive just into going the plateau, right? you know? But to, to understand that although the man on the dance floor who is rolling there and dancing is enjoying, those who are not as drunk as him understand that that is low class now. Yeah, that, 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 that guy is, is, is not himself. He's not yeah. himself. Yeah. So there are, there are levels to real enjoyment. And then outside of material enjoyment, like mode of ignorance, passion, and goodness, then there is spiritual enjoyment. And that means cooperating, uh, service, sacrifice, uh, restraint. All of these are a higher nature that mankind needs to be trained to uncover and to work with their higher nature. So most of the freedoms that are being touted is freedoms to do what I want, but not the, really the, free. The, the following of the impulse of my base nature. Yes, yeah? and, and with that, we are all incarcerated. We're basically locked in in our lower chakras and there's lots of money to be made. That's why now, there's a push that anything that people are thinking they want to do, how they want to express in the world, let them be. Because you're creating more and more markets to sell them all sorts of useless trappings in the name of freedom to enjoy their life, to express their own uniqueness. But that comes from a, an understanding of freedom perhaps that isn't considered deeply enough? 
Yes. Because I, I, I sometimes get the sense that it's not that people are being deceptive. Yes, they are also just, that's, that's where they operate. It's like if you're educated to be a marketer and in advertising, you can sell and market a product that you yourself would not probably even buy because you understand uh, how to, you could say, fend the spark of desire in people. Right. Yes. So we are living in so, a world. So, 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 so as, as, as a marketer, you, you're able to, because of your skill, because of your uh, education, you are able to ignite the, 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 the desire without the consciousness. Yes. And ah. you, are, you are incentivized to do that. The more you can sell this big dream to more people, then that is success. So we have a system that systematically oppresses humanity and, and we are all sort of part Players of this. In that, yeah. Yeah. Give us a call, 11 uh, What is freedom? What is freedom? And I'm asking these questions because perhaps the next time you you're sitting around talking about freedom with whoever it is that you're talking about. Perhaps you, you, you'll think mm, mm, twice <laughs> what it is that you want because at no point are you ever unincarcerated. At no point. But the question is what are you incarcerated by? What is it that 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 guides your decision making? Is it discipline slash love? Or is it chaos? The, the reality of unaccountability. The, uh, the reality of the word that is used these days, the reality of throwing caution to the wind in as far as accountability is concerned. Because I think that that is how we have come to understand what freedom is. We tend to think because, because we come from a reality of oppression. We tend to think that any form of freedom should not have any form of discipline. Because discipline is associated with oppression. And I think that that becomes our biggest incarceration. Yes. Yes. Uh, without discipline, then we are unable to shoulder the responsibility of freedom. Uh, because with greater freedom, then the greater the responsibility. You take, for example, um, your billionaire millionaire. Uh, he has resources that can change lives. Or with those resources, he can lobby to oppress, you know, millions of people. So it, unique to South Africa, this, we were deprived of everything and now it's our turn. So it's our turn to eat. Yes, and we, we even forget the conversation that even the resources that we want to enjoy require to be maintained. Like I travel in Europe and you can see that these communities are fully dedicated to material life. They know how to establish the facility and they definitely maintain it so that they can continue to enjoy it. But we are trying to consume the facility which the oppressor mm, put in place and actually take no responsibility for maintaining it even for posterity in most cases because, hey, we came late to the party and we want to enjoy it before sunrise. Um, I would say when we have love in mind and when we have a deeper understanding of ourselves and the environment to operate in, then we gain greater capacity to, to live freely and to allow more people to be free. You know, classic example, someone just throws a piece of uh, garbage out of a moving vehicle and say, hey, what are you doing? And then they say, no, I'm creating employment. Yes, yes, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, and... And in fact, why do you ask me this question? This is not your street. Yeah, you? yeah, well, what's your problem? Yeah. You know, you, this is all just borrowed, so you have no right to tell me how to use it.
but those who bear the pain and struggle to put it up, they are more concerned about how it's maintained and how it has longevity. Yeah, it's all about freedom, folks. Jennifer on uh, the WhatsApp line says, Hello, 702, please send me the name of the guest a guest monk on this show. He is absolutely wonderfully inspiring and amazing amazing to listen to. <laughs> His name is Savya Sachi Das Prabhu Jen. Um, Savya Sachi Das Prabhu. What we'll, we'll give, give you his contact details. I know he's mesmerizing. He's, he's, uh, he's just absolutely mesmerizing. Kid says, hi, Bru Orbs and the monks. Buddha. Uh, for me, freedom is equitable to actualization. It is a high order ideal state of mind. <laughs> The same make-believe concept used in movies, freedom is an act and desire to do the impossible and believe in possibilities. It is a desirable concept that all of us look forward to, says Keith in Midran. And Kabila says, today's freedom is measured by monetary value, intellectuality and not self-discipline. As a country, we were robbed of that freedom. When the late Robert Sobogo was deprived to share his knowledge with the people and we find ourselves not free in our minds, says Cabello. Uh, and uh, then, okay, those are the messages that have come through thus far. Let's take a call from Teresa in Northwest. Good evening to you, Teresa. Good evening, Aubrey. How are you? I'm well, I'm well, Sissy. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just going to uh, to define freedom from... Um, the literal point of view, whereby, for example, uh, if you have read Macbeth from uh, Shakespeare, where King Duncan says, um, life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets upon the stage and is head of no more. Mm. So this is what I want to say of freedom as well, that freedom is but, but a walking shadow, a poor player that and spreads upon the stage and is head of no more. Because, like, we are promised freedom from all facets of life, like the social, the economic, the, 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 the economic, even the, all facets of life, but we are never free. On the social level, in the family, we are not free enough to speak our, our feelings to our family, to our friends, and we suffer. Yet we are supposed to be free to talk to them, to talk our feelings. When it comes to the political level, we are kind of scammed into thinking that uh, if we elect this leader, we are going to be free. But the moment we put him on the stage, he forgets about us. And yep. then that freedom becomes like a walking shadow, a poor player. When it comes to the, 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 the physical uh, level, we are not free even from our bodies. We are forever sick. So I just believe that freedom is supposed to exist, but it doesn't exist at all. <laughs> Teresa in Northwest, does it exist? Oh, yes. Yes, freedom is our eternal position. Unfortunately, as Teresa has very nicely uh, articulated, that the freedoms that we are trying to garner are on a platform which is temporary and which is full of uh, frustrating limitations. So the conversation that I'm bringing forward is that there's a dimension of life which is based on our spiritual identity, which is guiding us back to that reality without limitation in terms of expressing our free will in love. And love is an ever-increasing uh, phenomenon because it takes fuel from the pleasure of the beloved. And as the beloved is more pleased, you become more pleased. When they see that you are pleased, they become more attractive. And it's a back and forth that can never be exhausted. Whereas in our temporary setups, it's a business deal. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Yeah. So the, the political... It's transactional, man, yeah. Yes, transactional. So I'll tell you what you need to hear so that I get what I want to get from you. Both parties assume that this transaction will bear profits to their liking, but then it's never the case. So human life 
and, and that nagging feeling and desire for freedom, it can never be extinguished because it is at the core of our very designs, our essence to be free. But we are in the temporary material world. And, and there, the whole design is a limiting uh, platform. It's meant to frustrate us. So we ask the question, why do I have this desire to be free? Where can I, can I realize this desire to be free? And it, it's, it's perfect design because if you want water, you can go look for it in the desert, but your chances of getting it are very limited. You'll struggle. But water does exist. If I'm not getting it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So freedom exists, and that's why we always seek it. But we're seeking it in a desert of the material world. We have to understand that it will be limited. But within that framework, we can grow in a higher form of living where even if it seems that I'm in the greatest of situations because I'm operating from a level of love of um, sacrifice I actually feel more free you know what is the next conversation you and I need to have mm. in the same way that we've had this conversation about freedom we need to have the conversation about love yes. because I think very often we think of love only in romantic goosey gushy terms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is a very practical, real thing. Right? It's very mm. practical. It is nuts and bolts stuff. Yes. I want us to have that conversation the next time you and I have that conversation. I know that the people will enjoy it. Mm. Can I read you a poem? Yes, please. I want to read you a poem. It's by Khalil Gibran. I oh. love Khalil Gibran. Yeah. He says, An orator said, Speak to us of freedom. And he answered, At the city gate, and by your fireside I have seen you prostrate yourself and worship your own freedom. Even as slaves humble themselves before a tyrant and praise him though he slays them. I, in the grove of the temple and in the shadow of the citadel, I have seen the freest among you wear their freedom as a yoke and a handcuff. And my heart bled within me. For you can only be free when even the desire of seeking freedom becomes a harness to you. And when you cease to speak of freedom as a goal and a fulfillment. You shall be free indeed when your days are not without a care, nor your nights without a want and a grief. But rather, but rather when these things girdle your life and yet you rise above them naked and unbound. And how shall you rise beyond your days and nights unless you break the chains which you, at the dawn of your understanding, have fastened around your noon hour? In truth, that which you call freedom is the strongest of these chains, though its links glitter in the sun and dazzle your eyes. Yeah. And then he continues, uh, and at the end he says, Verily, all things move within your being in constant half-embrace. The desired and the dreaded, the repugnant and the cherished, the pursued and that which you would escape. These things move within you as lights and shadows in pairs that cling. And when the shadow fades and is no more, the light that lingers becomes a shadow to another light. And thus your freedom, when it loses its fetters, becomes itself the fetter of a greater I give you one more. Your turn. One quick one. Oh my Lord, there is no limit to the unwanted orders of lusty desires. Although I have rendered these desires so much service, they have not shown any mercy to me. I have not been ashamed to serve them, nor have I even desired to give them up. O oh my Lord, O oh head of the Yadu dynasty, recently, however, my intelligence has been awakened, and now I am giving them up. Due to transcendental intelligence, I now refuse to obey the unwanted orders of these desires. And I now come to you to surrender myself at your fearless lotus feet. Kindly engage me in your personal service and save me. How do people get in touch with you? Savia the Monk, S-A-V-Y-A -A, the Monk, Savia the Monk on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, Savia the Monk. I love talking to you. Thank you very much for coming through. Thank you so much. Great stuff. Let's take a break. When we come back, I will listen to you.
Yeah, the white girls wanna wanna jump your bones, bro. <laughs> <laughs>